at the corner of happy and healthy. May take one to four days for full effect. Use as directed to treat frequent heartburn, not for immediate relief. News Radio 1070 WKOK presents On the Mark. It's a chance to voice your opinion on the events that affect life in the Susquehanna Valley. Call 1 800 795 9565 or email on the mark at WKOK.com. Now, here are your hosts for On the Mark, Mark Lawrence and Ben sure, Reikley. He's entitled On the Mark. I am Mark Lawrence, host of the show, uh, ultra liberal, democratically registered, flaming free thinker, borderline libertarian. Mark Lawrence is who I am. Across from me is a man who fits all of those descriptions, plus conservative Republican, Republican registered committee person, businessman, landlord, all around nice guy, an avid, rabid, rabid football fan. Ben Reikley's across the table. Mr. Fan of urban rap. Oh, urban rap. Oh, are you okay? You mean with all the cuss words and the demeaning references to women and all that sort of thing? No. No, not not that that part. part. The the good parts of it. Okay, well, fantastic. The social progressiveness of urban rap. Right, yes, yes. The message of uh, uh, rage against the machine, Mm -hmm. rage against the man. Fight the power. Oh, there you go. Isley Brothers. That's you, baby. (laughs) If anybody (laughs) fights power, it's you. (laughs) Kevin Hur is on the other side of the glass. And he is the greatest engineer the world has ever known. He's uh, smart enough and lucky enough to be uh, the uh, the most fantastic play-by-play man on the radio doing the Shikolami game tonight. He'll be there with uh, Coach Dick Hort and making sure that we understand exactly what's going on in the field, painting very ultra-graphic pictures of what's happening, moving left to right in front of you. Hopefully moving left to right to the point of yelling, touchdown, Shikolami. Sometimes so, moving right to left depending on the quarter. Well, that's true. Yeah, it keeps flipping around. That's what always confuses me as a viewer of the game when you're on the, watching it on the radio is uh, they, sw- they go the other way, and you never know. That's which direction you know, they're going. Half dollar, quarter, two right. bits. You and Kevin dressed today, I don't know, what. what's your symbol, the s- symbolism of your Scottish kilt you're yeah. wearing today, Kevin? <laughs> Is that for a particular reason or not? Uh, the, no, I, I like unity. I'm well, all about unity, I guess. The shaved legs are uh, quite, uh, quite progressive. I don't know. Right now, William Wallace is uh, is rolling because uh, freedom. He, he did not get freedom. That's right. Yeah, for some, for some reason, Mel Gibson running through the fields of, uh, of Scotland and, and England in what the uh, mid centuries trying to fight for uh, freedom just didn't make it. Didn't work. Okay. Well, Kevin looks great, though, and he's going to be wearing the kilt tonight in mm-hmm. honor of two things. One, uh, the uh, vote regarding independence that took place in Scotland, and our guest who's going to be calling in and during the 9 o'clock hour is Professor Rogers over at Susquehanna University. We've talked to him a couple of times. He is a person of Scottish descent and is uh, still a Scottish citizen. So uh, he is uh, a man from Scotland who teaches at Susquehanna and his subject area, Italian. So we'll talk about that. <laughs> A bit, might, might be tough on the cuisine. Right. <laughs> <laughs> a little, little scotch with your pasta? I guess, yeah, that could be. So it's good. But it's all good. So we're glad to say that he and uh, Professor Matt Russo, our best friend, our best conservative professor in the world. Okay, so he's the only conservative <laughs> professor in the world. He is small maj- <laughs> he's a minority. All right. He's going to be checking in, too. If you'd like to watch the studio, it only includes Ben and I, but we invite you to check out the webcam. If you are so moved to do so, you can join the millions of people that have the opportunity to watch the webcam and listen to crystal clear audio. Watch ultra sharp video, and uh, you can also use our YouTube channel as an archive if you miss the show. You can check it out later. On the Mark brought to you by the Sunbury Motor Company, family owned dealership since 1915, 4th Street, Sunbury, and routes 11 and 15, Hummel's Wharf. Pretty soon they're going to lumber up the driveway with a rollback that's going to have a brand new vehicle on it for Kevin to drive it next week. But in the meantime, he's driving the Kia Turbo SXL, and so he'll be elaborating on just how fast and efficient and fun and fun and fast and efficient. It's and, fun and affordable. <laughs> you, you know what I want, wanted to mention was the, uh, and I don't think I have this week was the panoramic sunroof. That's been uh, that's what? that's been a brand new feature on vehicles. Well, I mean, probably not brand new, but it's been new over the last couple of years. Where not only does the front seat have like the uh, sunroof, but also the back seat 
has a little bit of sunroof with it too. So when you open things up, the, now the, the front part actually opens up completely. The back part is just the glass, but at least it brings a little more light in. And it's, I, I love the panoramic sunroof. It, it's almost like opening up the curtains on a nice spring day. And if it's 9 o'clock at night and you're driving home to Danville? Uh, the moon shines brightly through. Okay. Well, rumor and the YouTube video, are, are these true that you drove through one of the local campuses and the ladies were just <laughs> running after you as you drove in that Kia with it, it the, might uh, be the coolest car i've ever driven to be sunglasses honest with on yeah, yeah. I, I mean i've i've driven a lot with the uh, sunroof open and the sunglasses on and wearing uh, a kilt i understand no i was not wearing a kilt and uh, if you have a narrow garage mark mm -hmm. and you want to park the car in the mm -hmm. garage there's power folding outside mirrors. Oh, my gosh. So you hit the button. They're automatic? They, yeah. And they do it. They actually close up as well when you lock the vehicle. Well, how does that work in your garage, Kevin? Because when you pull in your garage, <laughs> you get out, and then the next morning when you come out, your car is turned in a 180, right? My, my garage is wide open. I so, mean, I've so got that, plenty of room there. So your car just turns around for you, and you're able to come in and... My garage is so narrow, I get out of the vehicle. I have to ride the bike there out of the garage just to get out. It's so tight. And, and Mark, do you ever use the parking brake in your vehicle? <laughs> sure, all the time, every okay. time. It, you know how you, when you pull the lever, it makes the loud thump? It kind of scares you a little bit, and you check right. to make sure Wakes everything's up okay. People in the neighborhood. Yeah, uh, this the uh, the 2015 Kia Optima SXL Turbo actually has an electronic parking brake. Oh, bro. So you press a button, the electronic parking brake takes over. You release the button, you hit the button to release it, and you actually hear it just release, and that's all it is. It's very easy to use the parking brake on that. So if you happen to park on a, happen to park on a hill, you just turn the wheels to the inside, hit the parking brake, and you're all done. You don't have to pull any levers anymore. And your autograph on this is where? <laughs> you have to stop by this weekend at Sunbury Motors Kia Routes 11 15 Hummels Wharf to find out. And ask for the Kevin Hurd discount. SunburyMotors.com, the main website, and he'll tell us a little bit more about that. SXL Turbo in a little bit. Lenape Solar email in basket open. You simply email on the market, WKOK.com. Lenape Solar would like to hook you up directly to Sol, the sun itself or herself. You can be connected to the sun and you could make electricity. You can sell it to PPL or you could use it for yourself, use it to charge up yourself phone batteries and all your other rechargeables or you could use it to supplement the grid or you could use whatever you need electricity for they can help you do it using the sun at lenape solar they also you have a photo or check that solar thermal panels a very efficient way to generate a ton of heat today and uh, they can hook you up at lenape solar.com they would just love to do so you're listening to on the mark uh, we'll have an open phone segment the last half hour of the day during the nine o'clock hour professor daryl rogers an assistant professor of a Italian over at Susquehanna University is going to be checking in, and Matt Rosu is going to be on the line also, so we'll talk to him. Uh, but I'm very glad to say that a new group is forming called the Susquehanna Valley Progressives. Uh, we've talked about the Susquehanna Valley Conservatives, and of course this is a different political viewpoint. Susquehanna Valley Progressives are folks that are very interested in seeing some uh, some goals enacted in government, a much more uh, rational government in Harrisburg and Washington. There's sort of a commonality of all the political groups around here. So we're going to talk about their mission. One of the founding members of the group is on the line, and that's going to be our first interview today. Nicole Farraguna lives in Northumberland County, uh, very much involved in making sure that the progressives get a running start. Good morning, Nicole. Thanks for checking in. Good morning, Mark. Thanks for having me. I really do appreciate it. Ben can hear you, and Kevin's on board, too. Uh, you, uh, like other political groups around here, talking about some common-sense solutions, maybe from a different viewpoint or maybe some different uh, solutions. But tell me about the Susquehanna Valley Progressives. Sure. Well, you know, there's been a group of us that have been getting together now for a few years, you know, having good conversation and discussion. And we decided, well, maybe this could be something more. Maybe there's an opportunity to bring more folks in. So... We met in July for the first time to explore this idea of kind of a, a progressive coalition. And the consensus was, you know, yes, this is a great idea. Um, it's really just an opportunity to unite folks behind progressive values and to promote progressive values. It's not intended to replace any organization that already exists. There's actually a lot of great progressive groups already working in the region. But this is just an opportunity to kind of unite progressives and folks behind progressive values. And what are progressive values? I knew you were going to ask that. <laughs> the, <laughs> I, I think the um, overreaching progressive value really is what is good for the community as a whole, and not just 
for today, but for future generations. And so making decisions that are good for not just a select group or a small group or even the loudest group, but what really is best for uh, the society, the community as a whole. And, you know, we've, we've identified a number of issues, you know, clean, sustainable energy, um, protecting our, our government from corporate influence, uh, education, of course, is important. Equality issues, government transparency, ensuring that we have a, a fair, open government, health care, uh, income inequality, uh, protecting our natural world. You know, all of these things are really important. All right. And you have an event scheduled for next week when you'll be really talking about a man who's been addressing some of these points. Uh, tell us about that. Sure. So we have uh, an event called Money and Politics, the Corporate Takeover of Our Democracy, and we're bringing in Barry Kaufman, who's the Executive Director of Common Cause Pennsylvania, and really talking about the influence of money on our elections, on our democratic process, and as a result on our government, um, how this money plays out, what does it mean for the average person, and the uh, Citizens United decision, which... uh, uh, of course, is, is something that has caused uh, an additional amount of money, a lot of money, uh, to, to, to roll into the democratic process. All right, and these are really bipartisan issues. The imp- impact of money is affecting all parties. It's if negatively affecting all decisions. Uh, of course, the Citizens United uh, decision, you can argue whether or not that was uh, helpful to anything or not, but certainly helps, uh, you know, helps money to influence decision-making and outcomes. Uh, what should citizens uh, do? What can we do? Susquehanna Valley progressives might be something to consider uh, monitoring their activities, perhaps during Joining, that kind of thing. What can we do? I, I think we, one, have to be more aware. We have to be very educated in our voting process because the real problem with the Citizens United decision is that it allows, um, it, it, it is um, removing transparency from the process. So you have these corporations or these, these organizations that have these really official sounding names, you know, authoritative names that are putting these these commercials on television and on our radio uh, that really have a very strong agenda behind the scenes. So they may sound like they know what they're talking about, and they may be even say, sound like they are telling the truth, but in fact they have an agenda against uh, a specific candidate or more likely um, for a specific issue that benefits them. Uh, so it's you know really understanding the, the issues, being an informed voter, uh, looking to a, a variety of different sources for information, we will try to help with that process. And again, this event on Tuesday is really an opportunity for folks to understand how money is being used to influence elections. Well, and you're right. I mean, I think this really is, is an issue that transcends the, the political divide, because you do not want the um, any kind of um, big money um, individual to be able to come in and just influence an election. It really is about uh, individuals. It is about the voters who should decide the, the election. Mm-hmm. And, and, of course, Nicole, that would go for unions and, and groups that have been involved in this for, for decades uh, over the past. I mean, your, your point is to be transparent and, and show Absolutely. Money in politics. <clears throat> are, are progressives liberals or liberals progressives or the percentage breakdown? I don't have a problem with calling myself a liberal. Um, I think progressive is a, is a really great mm-hmm. word because it, it, its root is progress, and I think that's really what is at the base of the liberal slash progressive movement. Um, and I'll just say this, you know, when you talk about unions, yes, you're right, there's a lot of money being put into, into campaigns and elections by unions, but you also have to remember that unions actually represent a lot of workers whereas corporations usually represent the wealthy uh, stockholders. So there is a big difference. That doesn't no, mean that I, I, I don't believe I would, that we should um, <coughs> allow just unions to just, you know, influence elections. Their, their, their money should be as transparent as well. Yeah, but I, I disrespectfully, well, respectfully disagree with you on this from a standpoint that c- 
corporations and businesses are are people. Now, within corporations, there are unions that make up some of those workers. So, uh, again, the the different spins on Citizens United can be looked at in the details. And what Citizens United, when you look at the details of Citizens United, it uh, allowed businesses to compete in the political world, right, wrong, or indifferent, as well as unions, and unions ran the political system with money for, for decades, and uh, now now we're seeing a little pushback, but it's interesting in the transparency of money within politics is to look at the whole spectrum and where it's coming from and how it's coming. Yeah, uh, Ben, I'm going to have to disagree with you. Call me old-fashioned, but I don't think corporations are people. In fact, corporations are, they? are actually entities that protect the people behind the corporation. Well, how, how, can a, so how can a corporation not, not be the people that make up the a corporation? A corporation is an entity that is established by people, and the corporation is actually an entity that protects those people. And I'll give you an example. Um, if I were to kill 11 people, I probably would go to prison pretty quickly. The, you know, a, a couple of corporations that, that caused the oil spill in, in the Gulf in uh, 2010 killed 11 people due to neglect, negligence. Not only negligence, it was knowing negligence because they did it because they really wanted to curb costs and to protect their profit, which is what corporations are all about. Well, and hold no it. That, 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 that's not a fair statement. Let her finish. Let her finish. Nicole, that statement you just made about corporations, corporations are there to basically be corrupt you're saying and, and to be unlawful are, corporations exist to make money do you, do you agree with that businesses are there to be in business and to be in business you have to make a profit or you're not in business do biz- is businesses <coughs> primary priority to make money that's a yes or no answer. The, the, the business no, the has to make no. money to stay in business. <laughs> Nicole, to be alive, you have to breathe, correct? Absolutely. So if you don't That's breathe, one of our major then you won't, you won't live. It's to protect our air. It's to protect <laughs> okay. our water, not to protect corporations. And so corporations exist right now to make money, and that's fine. Businesses as long as they don't to impede money. on the rights of individuals, and they are. And that's one of our biggest concerns. You know, people talk about this idea of big government. But they don't realize the influence of big corporations. Corporations actually impact our lives in many ways. People don't even realize. You know, people, corporations are spying on you because they want to make money. They want to be able to, to know what you are going to buy next. Um, you know, there is uh, corporations who are, are, have control over, you know, our elections, over our, our government, uh, over a variety of different aspects of our lives. So, so corporations and, should be banned Businesses should be banned. I didn't say that. Okay, but if they're so bad, corporations though. corporations are fine. Okay. They make money. That's one thing businesses that people have to recognize money. is that corporations N- Nicole, are Nicole, your, your code words, your code words aren't working here. Money. Corporations, businesses to a degree, have to stay in business, and to bi- stay in business, they have to have protocol that allows them to to exist, which would mean be profitable. Businesses hire people. Corporations businesses, however you want to say it, are people, because that's what makes them up. Now, corporations, are, uh, corporations do not create jobs. That is not, oh, their, primary, that is not their primary priority. You gotta their be, what, priority what do they create? They make money. And in fact, mm. if they can make money by cutting jobs or outsourcing jobs, they will, that's and the they do. That's the efficiency of business, Nicole. That is what we have Nicole. seen in this country in the last N- Nicole, that's decades. the efficiencies of business. Right. Okay. So, and, and that's, so exactly. that's business. That's any business. they're making money. Any that's business prime, wants to be. primary. Th- this, this radio station has sure. to stay in business, so the efficiency of their labor force is going to be dictated to what's needed. They might need then 10 I people. Then I hope that you're not outsourced. Eight. I do. I do, I do <laughs> hope that. <laughs> Nicole, I, I, wish you, I wish you worked in a, in a profit-oriented I scenario have. to I, see I that. I have worked in a profit-oriented so, um, industry. Uh, I, sure. I have done that, I, and I recognize that that is the... The the, um, the basic uh, objective well, the, of, a, the, of a business the liberal, to make money. The and liberal I stance I, on saying the, businesses are bad and corporations need, are evil is, is wrong, I, and that's what's made this country. I never corporations are evil. Well, you, you just decided, we can go back and look at the tape, they've killed people, as you've just said. Ha, have they're they o- not? They're only in businesses are to make money. Are you saying that corporations have never killed people? <clears throat> the, the businesses in general have had fatalities. And, and I mean, and people businesses. have killed people. That doesn't mean that I believe that people are Well, then l- let's, let's prorate out what you're saying. So businesses are bad. 
Corporations, which are businesses, are bad. So how do we? I, I would how do like we put to rewind the tape labor? because I never said that. I said that corporations. I may. I will say this. I didn't say this before, but I will say this. Um, corporations do bad things, and that is why we need to make so, sure. So you mean and businesses again, do bad things? Corporations do bad things in the name of making profit. And again, we, that is one of the things why uh, the reasons why we as progressives believe that there needs to be strong regulations in place to ensure that we're protecting the people. From corporations. All right, I got to step in here <laughs> and uh, kind of ask you to uh, get back to the Susquehanna Valley progressives very sure. briefly. You know, the influence of money, one of the things that we're glad to say that uh, Barry Kaufman is going to talk about next uh, Tuesday. He also talked about uh, the influencing election, making sure that elections are fair, open to anybody who wishes to vote, and open to more candidates who wish to participate in the system. Any uh, reiterate the event next week and additional mm-hmm. words about the Susquehanna Valley progressives? Uh, sure. Sure. I mean, again, we are, we are about uh, not necessarily partisan. Um, we hopefully will bring folks from a variety of different parties um, to this event and to future events. We're actually um, working on a, a couple of different events uh, this fall, so hopefully we'll, we'll bring folks in from the community to learn about. Again, these are supposed to be educational forums to, to understand um, these issues better. I just want to say one thing, too. I mean, we talk about, um, they say money is speech, and I don't, I don't believe that. Money, to me, I mean, if I, when I open my mouth and money doesn't fall out, then I don't believe money is speech. But to me, I think that, you know, your money, you deserve to, to, to use your money for goods and services. I don't believe that you have the right to use your money to buy our government. And that is what we are going to talk about on, at this public forum. Um, you can learn more about us at sdprogress.org. You can follow us on Facebook. You can search Susquehanna Valley Progressives. Uh, and we're very interested in a dialogue um, and a conversation and, and really educating people on really important issues. All right. Very well. Thank you so much, Nicole. Thanks for checking in. Thank you. Very much appreciated. Nicole Farraguna, one of the founding organizers of Susquehanna Valley Progressives. There's another, a number of other folks involved in this. Look them up on Facebook, or you can just uh, Google Susquehanna Valley Progressives to find their main website, and they do have a meeting next week, and you can check that out. You're listening to News Radio 1070 WKOK. We're going to have to take a quick break to stay on schedule. We do have a call waiting, and so we'll get to him as soon as we get back from a quick commercial break. The toll-free line is open, 1-800-795-9565. A Lenape Solar email in basket is open. You simply email on the mark at wkok.com. And our main sponsor, I'm very glad to say, is located in Sunbury, Pennsylvania, the Sunbury Motor Company. Attention Central Pennsylvania truck buyers. This is the event you've been waiting for. Sunbury Motors September new Ford truck sale. Pick from over 125 new Ford trucks with savings up to nine grand. That's right, $9,000. Choose from over 100 F-150s. The number one selling truck for 37 consecutive years. SMC has over 100 new F-150s starting as low as $22,859. Sunbury Motors has 25 of the hot selling Ford Escapes and they're slack. To historic lows starting at 19890 FC isn't done there. Take $8,500 off new expeditions and up to nine grand off new 2015 Super Duty trucks. Every new vehicle is clearly marked with the lowest prices of the year. And financing as low as 0% for up to 72 months is available on many models. Hurry into Sunbury Motors in the North 4th Street Auto Plaza during this unprecedented September new truck sale. sale. Sunbury Motors proudly serving the Susquehanna Valley for almost a century. Hurry, Hurry before someone gets your new truck. Looking for comfortable, cost-effective heat? Look no further than Kohl's Hardware and Eden Pure Heaters. The Eden Pure Gen 4 infrared heater produces clean, economical heat and has no exposed heating elements that can cause a fire, making it safe for use near children and pets. The Eden Pure Gen 4 heater saves you money. Eden Pure heaters provide heat only where and when it is needed. The Eden Pure's power and portability deliver ultimate comfort, making it warm and cozy from head to toe anywhere in your home. The Eden Pure Gen 4 heater comes with a three-year warranty and is manufactured in North Canton, Ohio. If you're looking for an efficient, cost-effective, and safe source of heat, visit the knowledgeable professionals at Kohl's Hardware for expert guidance every step of the way. Heat and pure and cold. Check out the sale prices in our new circular at Kohl'sHardware.com and sign up for the exclusive online offers year-round. We're right around the corner, right here in your hometown. Come on home to Kohl's, your home for Eat and Pure Heaters. Eat and Pure and Kohl's. Kohl's Hardware. Come on home to Kohl's. 
The best get-togethers start with a trip to the beverage supermarket, Brewer's Outlet, Reagan Street, Sunbury. Why? Because Brewer's Outlet has not only a great selection of beer, including imports and microbrews, but also a lot more. Brewer's Outlet has water, soda, they roast their peanuts every day, and you can't forget about stopping by the pickle bar. Look for great deals on wine coolers and all your favorite snacks. Before you enjoy those special times with family and friends, make your visit first to the beverage supermarket, Brewer's Outlet, Reagan Street, Sunbury. Hi, everybody. Steve Jones from the Steve Jones Show. Today we'll talk with Tony DeFazio, Pittsburgh Sports Report, preview the Penn State football weekend and high school football, 3 to 5, News Radio 1070, WKOK. Everybody's working for the weekend. Welcome back to WKOK Live Telephone Talk Show entitled On the Mark. Joe, thank you for calling in. You are on the mark. Uh, yes. I used to be a pretty dedicated listener to your program. But I got a little disillusioned when I kept hearing this Ben Reichley guy, who is certainly, you know, has every right to his opinion. But when you, when someone get, a guest is on, on the program and he bullies them and won't let them tell whatever their agenda or opinion is, has totally turned me off uh, listening to your program. Well, that's... Uh, you keep stepping on people and bullying them. It's okay in a debate to have your opinion. But I've never seen a debate where the guy can just start talking when the other person's talking. Well, Joe, I don't think you don't that get happened. To hear, you don't get to hear what that person's saying. Joe, the person that was on earlier, if you go back and listen to the tape, there was a discussion. And if you have a discussion back and forth, you get information out. And people can agree to disagree, and, and that's fine. No, but what but happens, nobody's, and I'm going to do it to you, you now, is... You push your agenda and so let that person say their agenda. You have, you can answer afterwards. You can talk after he has something to say. And, and Joe, that's what and we did. Get if, your if, point across. If, but here you go again. Joe, if you were, if you that's were, that's what you do on this program. That's why I don't listen to it. Well, it's, right. you seem I'm to sure be listening. A lot of people don't because they're tired of you bullying the guest. Right, oh, Joe, not, good luck. They're not allowed to say what they want to say. And, and of course, you got to say what you wanted to say in plenty of time, didn't you? All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you to both of you. I have to interrupt both of you and step in front of this uh, and uh, say that the Lenape Solar email in basket remains open. Email on the market at WKOK.com. Main sponsor, the Sunbury Motor Company. We'll hear more about the hot car that Kevin is uh, driving. Coming up, Ben Reichley, the co-host. I'm Mark Lawrence. Another guest to calling in during the 9 o'clock hour. This is WKOK Sunbury. <laughs> CBS News, I'm Frank Setatani. Most Americans have probably never heard of Alibaba, but they will now. The Chinese e-commerce behemoth begins trading on the New York Stock Exchange about 30 minutes from now. Analyst Max Wolf says we should care because Alibaba is bigger than eBay, Amazon, or PayPal. You're watching the world put its money behind a belief in the future of the middle class of China to buy things. But it also, to some extent, reminds us of our place in an increasingly complicated and competitive world. Big Board Floor trader Ben Willis says he doesn't understand the hoopla, but he can't deny it. There is a celebratory mood on the trading floor, without a doubt. You can't help it. This is the biggest IPO in history. That initial public stock offering raised $168 billion. In Bell, Florida, a man shot his daughter and six grandchildren to death and took his own life. Sheriff Robert Schultz is trying to figure out why. There's still a lot of unanswered questions that we have. There's going to be questions that we will never get answered. Police say Don Spirit killed his young son in a hunting accident more than a decade ago. Children die every day caught in the crossfire of the Syrian civil war, but this week 15 youngsters lost their lives for a different reason. Live to CBS News correspondent Gary Nunn. Frank, these kids all under the age of two died in what the World Health Organization is calling the biggest tragedy in memory. A muscle relaxant called atracurium was apparently mistakenly substituted for measles vaccine given to some kids in northern Syria. WHO blames human error. The measles inoculation campaign has been suspended. Officials say the incident is likely to damage trust in health services in opposition-held areas. Sabotage has not been ruled out. The ties that bind won't be broken. By a margin of 55% to 45%, Scots have decided not to leave the United Kingdom. British Prime Minister David Cameron and the financial Financial markets may be relieved, but yes, voter Brioni McLeod is crestfallen. We were so close. I felt like crying so much of the time. I still do. Here at home, names from the Hollywood A-list are enlisting in the fight against sexual assault on college campuses. Live to the White House and CBS News correspondent Peter Mayer. 
Big names, Frank, including John Hamm of Mad Men, actress Kerry Washington, and the NBA's Karen Love. They joined the vice president and president in the campaign's public service ad. It's on us, all of us, to stop sexual assault. Learn how. And take the Officials play. say the drive will emphasize the need for responsibility and safety to prevent campus assaults. President Obama and Vice President Biden will formally unveil this effort here at the White House later today. The wildfire that forced about 3,000 people to evacuate homes near California's El Dorado National Forest shows no signs of slowing down. At the scene, CBS's John Blackstone tells us why it just keeps growing. Embers have been carried up in the smoke column and jumped two and three miles ahead of the main fire, starting new fires. Why are all those people staying? Standing in line at Apple stores, this is the day they begin selling the new iPhone 6. S&P futures are up six points. This is CBS News. More than 700 quick lane tire and auto centers across this country, and she chooses mine. I need tires, all season, and at a great price. She wanted it all, but even she was surprised once I crunched the numbers. Soon her Taurus was ready to roll. Say, you're good, Mr. Murphy, ma'am, at your service, even on weekends. With great prices on 13 name brand tires and no appointment necessary, Quick Lane is ready to serve. Visit quicklane.com. Mary, an IT manager for a mid sized company, compromised. Tell us, Mary. I compromised. Mary had to overspend on PDF software with excessive hard to access features or choose a cheap, stripped down solution. But now, new Nuance Power PDF delivers powerful, intuitive business functionality at a price that makes it unwasteful for Mary to provide to all. And the result is... Mary. Uncompromised. Try it free now at Nuance.com slash Power PDF. PDF. Uncompromised. French warplanes have joined the battle against ISIS terrorists in Iraq. CBS News correspondent Elaine Cobb has the story from Paris. Just hours after President Francois Hollande confirmed France would take part in airstrikes against Islamic State militants, French jets have attacked and destroyed their first target, a logistics depot in northeastern Iraq. Hollande's office says more airstrikes will follow in the coming days. But Hollande Thursday stressed France won't be fighting ISIS in Syria, only in Iraq. And like the U.S., won't be sending in ground troops. Elaine Cobb, CBS News, Paris. Health workers are knocking on doors across Sierra Leone to find people infected with the Ebola virus who've resisted getting treatment and pose a threat to spread the disease. The government has ordered everyone in the country to stay home for the next three days. The Ebola epidemic in West Africa has claimed more than 2,600 lives. Frank Setapani, CBS News. Geico presents Fan Mail to a Pig. Dear Maxwell, first off, I really enjoy your commercials about Geico's app. I watch them over and over and over. They make me both laugh and very hungry. Weird. Anyway, I just want to let you know how Geico's new claim status updates on the app really blow me away. Getting those updates makes me think of you. I'd like to thank you in person. Just send me your address. All the best, Big Bad W. Sure thing, Big Bad W. Uh, I got a pen. It's 802 Not Gonna Happen Lane. Claim status updates just a tap away on the Geico app. If you are behind on your bills, then this message is for you. How would you like to have a large portion of your credit card debt or medical bills forgiven? National Credit Card Relief would like to give you free information on a proven debt forgiveness program. It's not bankruptcy. It's not consolidation. This special program actually wipes clean the portion of your debt that is forgiven. Call for your free forgiveness information now. 800-520-1558. That's 800-520-1558. Don't wait. Call 800-520-1558. News Radio 1070 WKOK presents On the Mark. It's a chance to voice your opinion on the events that affect life in the Susquehanna Valley. Call 1 800 795 9565 or email on the mark at WKOK.com. Now, here are your hosts for On the Mark, Mark Lawrence and Ben Reikley. Good evening, and welcome on board. Welcome back to the WKOK Live Telephone Talk Show. We wrapped up another September week. It is September. Let's see if I can get the Groninger calendar to participate. It is, in fact, September 19th, 2014. Now, we have Kevin Hurd, the greatest engineer the world has ever known, who's driving a vehicle that is courtesy of our main sponsor, the Sunbury Motor Company, in Sakia S. 
XL Turbo Ultra Fast, and it has the special ISS roof on it. It's the International Space Station roof. Whenever <laughs> there's a flyover while you're driving, your passengers get to watch it, right? Yes, you should not look at it as the driver, but no. uh, and, Pull and, off. I, and and you know what? There might be an app you can download for the uh, uh, navigation slash entertainment system that will allow you to track the space station. I'm not sure because <laughs> there's a lot of icons on that screen that I haven't had a chance to look at yet. But if you'd like to test drive that vehicle, you can do that this weekend at Sunbury Motors Routes 11 and uh, Sunbury Motors Kia Routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf, and then everybody will see you in a Kia. All right, we very much appreciate this. And the price tag, gas mileage, and a couple of more details about the vehicle before you turn it in. Price tag about 30 ish, just a little bit more than that. And uh, let's see, gas mileage 31 on the highway, right? Yeah, 31 on the highway for the uh, 274 horsepower 2.0 liter engine. Uh, you don't need to run premium fuel in it, unlike most of Turbo's. Uh, engines on the market. You have to run premium in those. You do not have to in this vehicle. You can run regular unleaded, save a few bucks at the pump, and you won't be sacrificing any performance. Plus, you get the five-star crash safety rated vehicle with a five-year, 60,000-mile bumper-to-bumper and roadside assistance warranty plus the 10-year, 100,000-mile limited powertrain warranty. All right. Well, thank you very much for the extra words. Very much appreciated. SunburyMotors.com, where you find out about that particular Kia and all the rest of the vehicles they got there. Kevin's been uh, kind enough to show his, his the F-150 that he was driving around and the Kia Soul that he had and uh, the... Hyundai that you had, so uh, the Hyundai was uh, probably the sleekest, lowest to the ground one that we saw. So thank you, Kevin. Very much appreciated. Thanks for all the information. Well, it's uh, it's all about getting the information. I'm giving you a little bit of insight in the vehicles that you can't <laughs> get a chance that you don't get a chance to hear uh, normally in 60 seconds. And showing off your new vehicle. No, every no, week. no come no. on now. <laughs> I, 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 don't get me wrong. I, I enjoy driving them. But, right. you know, I do it for informational purposes. Thank you very much. Lenape Solar email in basket always open. That means you email on the market over to KOK.com, and it plops into the Lenape Solar email in basket, and it gives us an opportunity to talk to you about uh, the uh, topics uh, via email that we're discussing on the air. We do have a couple of emails pending, and so we can uh, sift through those. Lenape Solar, the company that provides that, they invite you to help harness the power of the sun for a brighter tomorrow. And they do have a showroom that you can check out what they have to sell and what they have to sell is photovoltaic or solar thermal systems. They can and talk to you a little bit there about commercial lighting audits, although eventually they'll have to visit your commercial establishment if you're a decision maker or a stakeholder at a business and you'd like to save a buck on the illumination that's unnecessary during the daylight hours. And they would just love to help you out. Lenape Solar and finally, ductless HVAC systems. Heating and cooling provided by Lenape Solar is uh, their speciality, their other speciality. LenapeSolar.com. They're located on 2nd Street. They'd love to see you in person in Sunbury. And soon enough, we'll be turning the clocks, let's see, back an hour, and it'll get dark before you even leave work. I thought you were going to tell us that you're now driving the latest solar panels around. No. <laughs> no. So you want to elaborate on those? No, no, not yet. All right. Our webcam is up and running. Hello, everybody. Millions of people get to watch the show each day. The webcam is an opportunity for you to watch our show, crystal clear image, ultra sharp audio, and so we thank you for that. As uh, this hour progresses, we're going to hear from Professor Daryl Rogers. He, he is a citizen of Scotland and is in the U.S. Uh, teaching at Susquehanna University as assistant professor, foreign language, his speciality. He's uh, teaching Italian from time to time. He also uh, very studied on the concept of learning a second language, uh, so English as a second language or Italian as a second language, whatever it happens to be, a speciality on the learning curve that is associated with uh, making sure that you can speak these uh, secondary languages. And Professor Matt Rosso is a professor of economics at Susquehanna University. We saw him, uh, and he's been on the program probably about a half a dozen times total, either checking in on a particular topic or coming to visit us for sort of a roundtable discussion, as we identified earlier. Uh, not one of the liberal professors that uh, we sometimes uh, would have to be compelled to describe some of our fantastic guests, but he's a little bit more conservative. He has helped out some Republican congressional campaigns, and uh, he is uh, very much appreciated whenever he checks in. We will have some news headlines uh, coming up, but I'm glad to see that our guests are on the line. Thank you, Matt, for checking in. Professor Russo, we appreciate you checking in today. Good morning, Matt. Are you okay. there? There you go. Good morning, Matt. Uh, thanks for having us. I really do appreciate it. And you brought uh, your friend, uh, the assistant professor, Daryl Rogers, with us. Good morning, Professor Rogers. 
Good morning. I really do appreciate it. Well, uh, where would I even begin? Uh, first of all, are you surprised your reaction to the vote in Scotland? They voted 55% to 45% to stay, uh, well, to, to not become independent, to stay aligned with the United Kingdom. Um, I can't say that I'm surprised. I mean, the voting, the, the polls in the past few days preceding the, the election showed that the they were very close, and that was not counting the undecided voters. And so um, I think pretty much everyone knew that if you're undecided, the likelihood was that, um, that you were going to go with a no. And so 45, 55, um, still fairly close. We're talking about um, 1.6 million people uh, versus 2 million people uh, voting, uh, obviously, uh, against it, so uh, against the independence for the, the 2 million. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not completely surprised, to be honest. All right, and were you able to vote? I am not able to vote. In order to be able to vote, um, you had to be resident in Scotland, and you had to be able to prove that you had an address in Scotland and be on the voters' roll in Scotland. And because I'm resident in the United States, um, I couldn't do that. However, other people who um, are resident in Scotland and who are not Scottish were able to vote. So, um, for example, English people living in Scotland were able to vote. Um, uh, people from the, uh, the EU uh, were able to vote. People um, from other countries within the EU and within the United Kingdom were able to vote. But anyone who is Scottish but living outside the country is not able to vote. And teenagers got involved in this? <laughs> yeah, that was um, a surprise, I think, for everyone when David Cameron announced that 16- and 17-year-olds were going to be allowed to, to vote in this election. I'm not quite sure that, um, what the, the reasoning behind that was. I know that that caused a, a lot of debate. Um, I don't think everyone was agreeing on the, on that decision, but that's what happened. All right, so uh, independence uh, went down to defeat, and this will be a question for both of our professors on the, l the line. We'll start with Daryl, and then we'll go to Matt. Uh, what, is the, what is the net effect of this internationally uh, since uh, Scotland's going to stay part of the United Kingdom? And, uh, well, I, let me just say that, that nationally speaking, I think, has opened up a whole um, debate that's not finished. So, I mean, uh, I, the, whilst the, the idea of independence has been put aside for the moment, I think the, the whole question of um, more powers or devolution for further devolution for the for Scottish uh, people is still on the, on the cards. After all, David Cameron announced in the last few days, um, made more concessions uh, to, to Scotland, saying that, you know, if you stay with us, we'll give you more powers. And so I think that also helped um, sway the, the vote, at least for the undecided people. And so I think that, that as far as internationally is concerned, I think it gives the, um, the United Kingdom more strength to, uh, when dealing with EU and also with, with the United States and other countries. Um, I think if they had uh, lost Scotland, they would have lost some of, uh, well, quite simply, they would have lost some respect, maybe as well as some power. And so I think it, it gives them, uh, continues to give them a strong voice in international affairs. All right, Professor Rosu. Yeah, the, the one thing that I found interesting is the idea of the economic consequences of it did seem to get a fair amount of play, uh, both um, not, and it wasn't always the things that I thought would be the bigger issues coming up, but the fact that people were raising issues like what happens if our country, if we break, a, break away from the country, what type of currency do we use? Uh, how will the pension system keep working? Uh, the, you know, we've the idea here, there's a poll this morning uh, on the Reuters is reporting it. 24% of Americans say they either strongly support or tend to support the idea of their state breaking away from the national government. Right? It's not as easy as you just say you break away. And that's, that was one thing I found pretty fascinating with the discussion and I guess somewhat, somewhat reassuring that at least those issues were brought up. All right. Is there any way, Daryl, that you will be affected by this? You're living in the U.S. You're sort of permanent resident at the moment, if, if that's not an oxymoron of a statement, uh, <laughs> is that uh, you're in the U.S. Will you be affected in any way? I don't think I will be affected, to be quite honest, directly. I mean, living in the United States, I, I mean, I, I think there was more chance of me being affected if Scotland were to have come, uh, become, um, you know, independent. I think what's always going to affect me is the the, the knock-on effect that will have in my family. You know, my parents and my uh, two sisters still live in the UK. Um, so my, my older sister, my mom and dad live in Scotland. My younger sister actually lives in London, and she wasn't able to vote either. Um, so, yeah, I don't think that it will have a direct effect on me. I think what's going to be interesting is to see the effect um, that it has 
obviously on my family, and ho- I hope there's a positive effect. I, I'm, I'm not completely convinced it will be. Uh, Daryl, this is Ben Reichley. If you could give us maybe a little background, what drove this? You know, you, we hear you know some economics. Uh, you, you go back. Uh, our producer talked about the, uh, the the movies in the past and the Scottish freedom. But but what was the what was the fact that that drove this all the way to the point where it was voted on? Wow, that's <laughs> that's a big question. I think I think this has been on the cards to be quite honest for a long time. You know, I mean, it's not something that um, just kind of happened overnight, I'm sure you know that, but, um, you know, I mean, growing up in, in Scotland and growing up in the 80s, um, I was a, a child of, of um, the, the Tory government, which was never a, a popular government in Scotland. Scotland is um, historically and traditionally a much more uh, liberal type government compared to the more conservative English government, and so I think the, the controls um, from Westminster over the years have um, have made a lot of Scottish people, not all, everyone obviously, but a lot of Scottish people very unhappy with um, the way they have been, they've been treated and often seen as second class citizens. Um, just to give you an example, there's, um, you know, the, the, the current government, uh, David Cameron's government, there is only one Tory MP in the whole of Scotland. One. Uh, so we, every other MP is from another uh, another uh, political party. So it's kind of hard to say that they, uh, they represent um, truly represent Scotland. And so I think in that sense, um, Scotland, even though we have our own go- uh, government and we have a devolved government this is since 1997, 1978, 1998, I believe, um, and so we have our own powers, but they are limited by Westminster, so in, by London. They ultimately have the, the final say in whether something that we, you know, the government in Scotland makes a decision, they have a final say in whether to veto it. And so I think the feeling was from, from Scottish people, uh, we want we want to make the decision, definitive decisions for ourselves, for ourselves, and what we know is best for us. Well, well the Northern Ireland scenario back in the '60s and the '70s was, was one of, of violence. Uh, the, the Scottish scenario we're looking at now came through the political system, mm-hmm. but also too, you spoke earlier. David Cameron made concessions not only to the Scots. But he also had to then look at Wales and look at Northern Ireland, and and so now will this uh, what what Scotland did will it also will increase uh, uh, opportunities now in, in Northern Ireland and Wales. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the first minister in Wales, the first minister in Northern Ireland today, all came out and, and, and said they were ha- happy that Scotland made this decision, but they felt that the conversation was by no means finished. That they would like to discuss and need to discuss. Uh, the need for further um, devolution of powers for all uh, members of the United Kingdom, so including England, and so th- to, to to have more say in what happens within their own borders. So even though we're still the United Kingdom, you know, a more federalist type government whereby uh, each each country has more um, autonomy, essentially. Well, we look at some of the statistics, but it says, uh, you know, the percentage of UK population who live in Scotland is eight percent. The Scottish uh, means, as far as the contribution, what they contribute to the overall UK GDP is about eight percent. But then, looking at the economics, Matt, a little farther, you throw in the energy and the North Sea oil and where they have to come from, mainly from Scotland. It makes Scotland th- th- they have a pretty good leverage over over some parts of the UK economy. Yeah, and that was certainly part of it. I found the what I found on the de- the debate interesting is honestly, I thought the net effect minus the transition costs would probably be about zero. Uh, Scotland seems to be getting more from what I can tell. They seem to receive more in government payments on average uh, than the rest of uh, the rest of the UK, but um, they they'd have control over a lot of uh, energy resources, which should have seemed like that would have offset things. Uh, as far as the economic concerns, the one big thing that I thought could have been real trouble down the line, should this have gone through, would have been um, the currency ish situation. <coughs> In the Scot- um, the, uh, the idea was floated that the uh, Scotland would like to stay with the pound should, uh, even, even if this vote, the vote was yes. Which would have been confusing, wouldn't it? Well, I, I don't know that it would have been confusing necessarily, but you, the issue that you would have run into is that uh, Scotland would have no longer had control over monetary policy. And that, if you see some of the problems some of the countries with the euro have, 
that's a big problem. So there are times when perhaps a country uh, like Spain right now could use a little bit of inflation because largely, I mean, to be blunt, the wages are higher than the productivity, so the unemployment rate is too high. Wages don't, firms don't cut wages very often. They just, it just doesn't happen for a number of reasons, either legal or morale or cultural. Uh, it's much easier for wages to be cut, um, you know, quote unquote cut in purchasing power by having some inflation there. If a country breaks away but still uses another country's currency, they don't have that power anymore. And the flip side, there might be times that uh, Scotland's economy would be doing great and would not want inflation, but the rest of uh, the UK might find themselves in a case where they a little bit of inflation is necessary to lower the unemployment rate, and that would have adverse consequences as well. So that was one thing that wasn't discussed very much. Uh, some economists were bringing this up, but I thought it was a very kind of it was a very real point whether if Scotland did not choose to make their own to create their own currency. Of course, now it's it's a moot point for Scotland, but it's not. I mean, this is a, one of the issues that a lot of the countries in the euro are facing right now. We're on the news line right now with uh, Matt Rosu, the professor of economics at Susquehanna University, and his friend and colleague Daryl Rogers, a Scottish citizen, is on the line, teaches foreign language at Susquehanna University. A vote overnight, uh, well, the vote was announced overnight, the vote was taken yesterday, uh, was uh, that uh, voters in Scotland of many ages, and only those with permanent addresses, uh, voted 55% to 45% uh, to keep their affiliation with the United Kingdom. Now, we have open phones. If you want to talk to our professors about this, speedy dialers only, 1-800-795-9565, 1-800-795-9565. Professor Rogers, how would you have voted if you had been given the opportunity? Oh, wow, that's a good question. Um, before I answer that question, can I just say that although Scotland, um, more is spent on Scotland, as, Ma as Matt pointed out, uh, Scotland pays more in taxes per, per person. Uh, and uh, when you compare the numbers to the pe what people in England and Wales and Northern Ireland pay, so um, I think it's only fair, actually, that yeah. more people would, but more would be spent on them because they actually pay more uh, in taxes. But um, I'll leave that aside for the moment. Um, the other, I, I don't, uh, to be quite honest with you, I think I would, um, I, I would probably have voted for independence. I, I think I would have been one of those undecided up until the last minute. I can I could see um, why uh, why you wouldn't. I could I, I obviously read up on things, and many people who voted for independence obviously knew the the possible consequences down the road. But when it comes down to it, I think um, for for people who have uh, who have had the history that Scotland has had uh, with the relationship with England, albeit peaceful for at least for the past 300 years, um, I think what, what prevails at the end of the day is a nationalistic spirit and one to say, you know, it's time for us to forge our own identity. And so I think, although it sounds, you know, the, the thing of movies, I think um, I, I understand more and hoped more that independence would have prevailed at the end of the day, but I'm not completely um, disappointed uh, that, that, it's, that, that you know, we're remaining with the status quo. Of course, I hope the status quo doesn't continue as it did before. I hope changes happen. Well, would, would you say that uh, the, the spirit and that independence uh, attitude uh, Scotland is to UK, somewhat what Texas is to the United States? <laughs> That's so funny. One of my friends from uh, who is from Texas actually wrote to me this morning and made that comparison. Um, I, I don't know enough about the situation in Texas to make that comparison. I will tell you what my friend said is I can while while he was happy that um, because he spent some time in the UK, he lived in England for a number of years. He said I'm happy that the UK has remained together, but um, considering the fact that I disagree so vehemently with my uh, the government in Texas, I have a little taste of what it must be like for the people in Scotland, where the majority of people disagree um, with. Uh, their government. So yeah, I guess there's some there's some comparison there. I just don't know enough about it to make a comment. All right, we have time for an additional comment from both of our pr professors. We'll start with Professor Matt Rosu, economics professor at uh, Susquehanna University. An additional comment today. Uh, well, I don't know that I have much more to say. I think uh, uh, Dr. Rogers has done some things up adequately. I, I, it didn't affect me nearly as much, of course, as uh, Professor Rogers. I have spent some time in the UK and I guess from the perspective of being living more in London and visiting Scotland, I probably was more happy. I probably, you know, I like the idea that it's staying as the UK, but I certainly do understand um, the idea up there and uh, the idea of 
wanting to split free from a government you're not fond of. All right. Uh, additional thoughts, Professor Rogers. Um, at the end of the day, I think what what we can be proud of in Scotland is that the, the amount of people that came out to vote was one of the highest turnouts ever known to the country. And I think um, I think it's somewhere around eighty five to eighty seven percent voter turnout. So this, this what we had what we saw was um, were voters who were traditionally disengaged from the political process got out at the end of the day and made their voice heard and did so in a, a peaceful fashion. Um, the end of the day, the, the no people prevailed. That's fine. We and I think Scotland is, uh, you know, is big enough and strong enough to pick up the pieces, get together, and move on. And I hope, as I said earlier, what we move on to is is a new Scotland and a new United Kingdom, whereby more powers are given to the, each individual country within the United Kingdom, so that something like this doesn't need to happen again. All right, fantastic. Thank you so much for your comments. Come and visit us. Both of you would be fascinating professors, and I think we can just talk about, uh, given more time, what is a modern Scotland? I think that would be very much be enlightening to our audience. So both of you, uh, welcome. Separate occasions, perhaps, or together. We'd love to have you bo both in the studio. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having us. I appreciate that, both men. Uh, professor uh, Matt Rosu from Susquehanna University, economics professor, has been here a couple of times, and Daryl Rogers, a Scottish citizen who is an SU professor, teaches Italian in central Pennsylvania and Dutch country <laughs> from it's Scotland. A pretty diverse. Uh, <laughs> they got a diverse resume, campus just yeah. in his office, yeah. so we got it all going. All right. Well, well we are going to take a quick break. Yep, we're going to stay on schedule. If folks want to talk about this, really global implications, and, uh, you know, uh, David Cameron really talking about some positive changes that will happen as a result of this. Uh, he feels are positive changes, and uh, we can talk about that when we return. Uh, the toll-free line is now open, 1-800-795-9565. That's 1-800-795-9565. You can always email us at Lenape so or on the market, WKOK.com. It's sponsored by Lenape Solar and LenapeSolar.com. They sponsor the Lenape Solar email in basket, and our made, uh, main sponsor is the Sunbury Motor Company. Attention Central Pennsylvania truck buyers. This is the event you've been waiting for. Sunbury Motors September new Ford truck sale. Pick from over 125 new Ford trucks with savings up to nine grand. That's right, $9,000. Choose from over 100 F-150s. The number one selling truck for 37 consecutive years. SMC has over 100 new F-150s starting as low as $22,859. Sunbury Motors has 25 of the hot selling Ford Escapes and they're slack. To historic lows starting at $19,890. SMC is it done there? Take $8,500 off new expeditions and up to nine grand off new 2015 Super Duty trucks. Every new vehicle is clearly marked with the lowest prices of the year. And financing as low as 0% for up to 72 months is available on many models. Hurry into Sunbury Motors in the North 4th Street Auto Plaza during this unprecedented September new truck sale. sale. Sunbury Motors proudly serving the Susquehanna Valley for almost a century. Hurry before someone gets your new truck. Are you concerned about funding your child's college education? Let Mifflinburg Bank & Trust take your worries away with a new home equity loan. Come and meet one of our loan officers to discuss available rates, terms, and financing options. Or apply online today at mbtc.com. Mifflinburg Bank & Trust, your community's trusted financial resource, with convenient locations in Mifflinburg, Lewisburg, Milheim, New Berlin, and Schmokin Dam. Always online at mbtc.com. Member FDIC. Equal House. Lender. When your kids are young, it's easy to postpone saving for college. But the earlier you start, even with small amounts, the more you may benefit from tax savings or other financial advantages. So to start your plan now, contact me, Betsy Guffey, of Milestone Investment Services, located at Mifflinburg Bank & Trust. Advisory services and securities offered through Lincoln Investment Planning Incorporated, member FINRA and SIPC. Lincoln Investment Planning is not affiliated with Milestone Investment Services or Mifflinburg Bank & Trust. Securities are not FDIC insured and involve risk, including possible loss of principal. At Jack Williams Tire and Auto Service Centers, your old tires are worth extra cash every day with the Jack Williams Trade-In Upgrade. It's simple. Bring us your old tires and we give you cash. And right now, get up to a $70 MasterCard reward card with the purchase of select Michelin and BF Goodrich tires. Jack Williams Tire and Auto Service Centers, going the extra mile for over 85 years. Online at jackwilliams.com. Offer ends 9 21 
Where are your old tires worth extra cash every day? At Jack Williams Tire and Auto Service Centers. Thanks to the Jack Williams Trade-In Upgrade. It's simple. Bring us your old tires and we give you cash. Plus, for a limited time, get up to a $70 MasterCard reward card with the purchase of select Michelin and BF Goodrich tires. Jack Williams Tire and Auto Service Centers. Going the extra mile for over 85 years. Online at jackwilliams.com. Ends 921-14. Where do you find safe and effective products to clean up the toughest messes around your home? Hi, I'm Bruce Fabrizio, inventor of Simple Green brand products. And I invite you to try a Simple Green solution for your cleaning needs. Simple Green! I'm so sure you'll be happy with the ability and safety of my products that I guarantee your satisfaction or I'll refund your money. To learn more, visit us at simplegreen.com. Simple Green! Simple Green! Cloud may be just another overused buzzword, but the cloud is an effective computing environment that can save your business time and money. Barracuda Networks is no stranger to the cloud. In fact, all of our security and storage solutions connect to the cloud for continuous updates and off-site redundancy. Barracuda's cloud also plays host to our email security, web security, file sharing, and e-signing services. We even offer solutions on Amazon's AWS and Microsoft's Azure public cloud platforms. To try any of our cloud-connected solutions free, visit barracuda.com slash cloud. Welcome back to the KOK Live Telephone Talk Show. Kevin Hur, a player of appropriate bumper music. Thank you very much. We have open phones right now, 1-800-795-9565. Uh, we'd love your call. We have some very brief news headlines. 39 people are involved in the criminal charges filed after a large drug bust yesterday in North Emelon and Montour counties. State Attorney General Kathleen Kane says her office has charged 19 alleged drug traffickers, including an out-of-state supplier who brought heroin into the valley. He's Pedro Acosta of Brooklyn, New York, and the arraignments took place yesterday. State police still trying to flush out that man who's the suspect in the killing of a trooper. They say he's holed up in dense, swampy, wooded areas of northeastern Pennsylvania, Monroe, and Pike County, but precisely where they don't know. And they've been looking at possible hiding places, hunting cabins, campsites, and other occasional residences in the Pocono Mountains. An intense late-night search Thursday called off in a heavily wooded area uh, around uh, Freen's, uh, Eric Freen's uh, parents' home. Some roads were blocked there. Red Cross set up a shelter for residents who had to evacuate that area, but uh, the search uh, turned up empty. Energy company Range Resources has paid the biggest fine in the state for a natural gas drilling accident. They agreed to pay $4.15 million for problems at a western Pennsylvania site that handled natural gas drilling waste. It's the largest penalty the state has ever imposed on the shale gas industry. Range, based in Texas, says Thursday it accepts the DEP fine and is deeply disappointed that the violations occurred. The fine was imposed for leaks at open pits. Range operates to store flowback water. The liquid waste uh, can include naturally occurring ultra-salty brine water, heavy metals, and chemicals used in the drilling process. Department Secretary Christopher Abruzzo says the landmark agreement establishes a new higher benchmark for all of the natural gas companies and is an environmental win for Pennsylvania. And incidents in which NFL players have beaten their spouses and children may mean the league's finances take a hit. Another major sponsor has expressed misgivings about their ties to the NFL. The head of PepsiCo says she's deeply disturbed by the string of incidents which include Ray Rice punching his fiance in an elevator and Adrian Peterson's indictment on a child abuse charge. PepsiCo's Indra Noya says some players have engaged in what she calls repugnant behavior and that the league is guilty of mishandling these issues. PepsiCo supports the league through sales of Pepsi, Doritos, and Gatorade. All major sponsors, another major sponsor, beer maker Anheuser-Busch, says it's increasingly concerned about the league's image. Open phones right now, 1-800-795-9565 is our telephone number. Chris from Milton, thanks for checking in. You're on the mark. Yeah, I think if you listen to the tape, you'll find out uh, Ben was interrupting and he was putting words in her mouth a couple times, and especially for a phone-in guest who's been invited to phone in, who's trying to express uh, uh, things about her organization, I thought that was in bad taste. I'm not really against interrupting people in a debate if it furthers the debate, but uh, I don't think that was the case. I also questioned the, what he was 
his new fondness for the world word business over corporations. He always wanted to refer to them as businesses. I know there was a Republican think tank that recently said that Republicans or conservatives shouldn't use the word capitalism. They should use business because uh, that registers favorably and capitalism doesn't. Maybe it's the same with corporations. All right, Ben, your thoughts on well, this? Well, there, there's, you know, when you when you're having a discussion, there's back and forth. That, you know, one, I'm I'm sure the people on the left uh, or people uh, certainly that uh, will disagree with uh, Nicole or disagree with me will take their sides. But the, nobody, there was no intent to interrupt or, or to hold anyone's speech back. I don't think on anybody's part. But the information that you're saying in reference to businesses or corporation, it's it's how you're defining what the groups are that are engaging in labor or management and or overall business so uh, you know whatever terms you want to use uh, I by no means w would say capitalism shouldn't be used or should be used but if you're talking about corporations corporations are businesses uh, there's businesses that are nonprofit there are businesses that are profit so. corporate laws and they incorporate the other thing you were talking about is uh, the 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 whether uh, the, the purpose of corporations was to make money, and you kept saying, well, they have to survive at least, and that's true. There's nothing that prevents corporations from being good citizens or, or uh, fi taking financial set, uh, decrease in profits, except that they are in competitions with other businesses, and so when they, when, when, when that happens. When that happens, you do have a race to the bottom very often. Well, the other really. thing is that about corporations making, uh, for the, when they were having the inversion discussion, every business station on TV, all the conservatives were saying, well, they have a fiduciary responsibility, corporations, to, to their stockholders. Well, and, and it would be, uh, they should be fired if they're not getting maximum money. So the conservative position seems to jump around a lot there relative to the convenience well, it, of the it, argument. Well, it depends who the conservative is, but I would, s I Almost would say... Almost every one of them. You couldn't okay. find anybody in the inversion argument who was saying, well, if they can make more money by moving to Canada, they should. It's their uh, obligation. I, well, they have a fiduciary obligation. I, I, I don't take that point. The point about what you're saying, race to the bottom, is that no, the marketplace will dictate... But that was businessmen saying that who were <laughs> corporate people. Okay, well... They, Here's what I'm saying: that the marketplace will dictate your your businesses and your profit. If you're profitable and you can sustain profitability, you will be in the marketplace for your goods, your services, wherever they are at. From a standpoint that businesses have to be profitable to stay in business, that that's at any size. Now, the to imply that corporations are deceiving and trying to make profit somewhat illegally, uh, that's 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 something that uh, you have to look at the regulations and the laws and the rules of business uh, to, to discuss that. But if corporations, as it was implied, are, are involved in murdering people and some things like that, that throws the discussion into more of a touchy-feely, emotional side that now you can't really discuss the issues. Is it a tax code issue? Is it a business regulation issue? Those are things that, that can be discussed so businesses can flourish, and if businesses flourish, they hire people and people work, and that's a, that's a capitalist system or a, a system that allows the uh, marketplace to grow with businesses and with labor. All right, Chris, and last that's a long-winded way of saying very little, or it seems to take up a <laughs> well, lot of time. says you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got well, you, Chris. What was an answer? Thank you so much. I appreciate hey, that. Well, well, we'll get back to Chris another time. All right, 1-800-795-9565, two corporate emails. One says, what is the purpose of a business or a corporation? Uh, I believe the purpose of a corporation <laughs> is uh, to conglomerate a business together in such a way that uh, it is a... Um, Forget. It's I mean, it, it enables it to to sort of be a separate entity. Well, it's a, it's, it's no a, longer just the people involved. It's the corporation then. Well, it's, that's it's, not it's, an a, it's a legal. Course. It's a legal term. I mean, you have corporations. You have partnerships. You have S corporations. You have LLC. So you, you cor corporations 
are the regulations to form a business? Actually, I, th I think the question was involving what is the reason for having a business? Well, the reason and for or corporation. Oh, what's the purpose of a business? Right. Why does it exist? Well, uh, the corporation exist for the legal entity of, of a business meaning you can have you can incorporate you can have partnerships you can have various corporations of s corporations or limited liability corporations or limited liability partnerships but corporations and other terms allow you to regulate your business but but the question wasn't referred to as what's the difference between a business and a corporation it was more along the lines of why does a business exist in the first place to create a product or service i think is the point they were trying to oh, make oh well that's back to basic 101 the you know how something exists and somebody needs well basically well, one of the things is somebody has a problem and somebody's coming and solve the problem and if that problem uh, uh, still exists and you can solve it for more people, you're probably going to form a business or an entity to, to so your goods and services can solve people's problems. But right. it's not there to employ people. All right. Ben qualifies for next week's Penn State tickets, having said that a corporation <laughs> is a separate legal entity that uh, enables a business to thrive. And the Wikipedia definition is a corporation is a separate legal entity that's been incorporated either directly or through legislation, through registration process known by law, allowing business uh, shareholders and employees to work under the same corporate umbrella. All right, uh, John, I hate to do this to you. I'm going to have to ask you to stand by. I don't want to get too far behind in my commercial, so we're going to take a quick break. You're listening to News Radio 1070 WKOK, and is is our On the Mark program. Attention Central Pennsylvania truck buyers! This is the event you've been waiting for! The Nerdy Motors September New Ford Truck Sale! Pick from over 125 new Ford trucks with savings up to nine grand. That's right, $9,000! Choose from over 100 F-150s, the number one selling truck for 37 consecutive years! SMC has over 100 new F-150s starting as low as $22,859! Sunbury Motors has 25 of the hot-selling Ford Escapes and they're slack! To historic lows starting at 19890 FC isn't done there. Take $8,500 off new expeditions and up to nine grand off new 2015 Super Duty trucks. Every new vehicle is clearly marked with the lowest prices of the year. And financing as low as 0% for up to 72 months is available on many models. Hurry in to Sunbury Motors in the North 4th Street Auto Plaza during this unprecedented September new truck sale. sale. Sunbury Motors proudly serving the Susquehanna Valley for almost a century. Hurry before someone gets your new truck. Hello, this is Justin Charles from Lenape Solar. Did you know that through energy savings of almost $5 million per year, our customers are saving the environment the equivalent of over 98 million miles of driving and eliminating the annual carbon dioxide emissions of over 5,600 homes each year? Do you want to know how to be a part of these amazing numbers? Call us at 286-1496 or visit us online at Facebook or LenapeSolar.com today and find out more about our exclusive Buy American Partners for solar energy and energy efficient lighting upgrades. Safe Hunting PA in a minute. Brought to you by Ram. Being a great hunter requires a lot of skill and a commitment to safety. Hunting for a great truck, however, only requires tracking down your nearest Ram dealer. That's because Ram 1500 is the only truck with an available class-exclusive eco-diesel engine that gets up to 28 miles per gallon highway and can haul 9,200 pounds. See your local Ram dealer today. Guts. Glory. Ram. Based on standard pickup and automotive news classifications, EPA estimated 20 at MPG Highway based on Equal Diesel V6 4x2. Max towing capacity when properly equipped. Ram is a registered trademark of Chrysler Group LLC. The fall means archery hunting season, and the Pennsylvania Game Commission urges hunters to consider these safety tips. Inspect your bow and arrows for damage prior to use. Carry broadhead tipped arrows in a protective quiver and never walk with a knocked arrow or bolt. Keep crossbows pointed in a safe direction and keep your thumb and fingers away from the string. Properly identify your target. All Always make sure someone knows where you're hunting and when you expect to return. For more information, log on to penswilds.com. Come on home to convenience. Come on over with style. Come on home to Kohl's Hardware for GE LED energy saving light bulbs. 
their long-lasting performance and outstanding energy efficiency will illuminate your home with soft, warm, dimmable light. GE LED bulbs are extremely durable and low maintenance. GE LED bulbs can last up to five times longer than compact fluorescent bulbs, making them perfect for hard-to-reach light fixtures. If you want to save money on your monthly energy bills, cut down your lighting energy consumption by up to 80% and not have to think about replacing a light bulb in your home for years to come, visit the knowledgeable professionals at Kohl's Hardware and let them shed some light on the new GE LED energy efficient light bulbs. Save money and energy with GE LED bulbs at Kohl's Hardware. Sign up for exclusive online offers year round. We're right around the corner, right here in your hometown. Come on home to Kohl's for GE LED energy saving light bulbs. Come on home to Kohl's. Kohl's Stony Hill Tree Farm is filled with fall fun. Now through November 2nd, Fridays through Sundays, roam the maze and also browse the Christmas shop. Price is just $8 for adults, kids 5 through 12, and seniors $5, kids 4 and under free. The pumpkin patch is open starting September 19th. Beginning September 27th, enter the Build a Scarecrow contest with Facebook fans judging the best. You could win cool prizes. Get details at Kohl'sStonyHill.com. Kohl's Stony Hill Tree Farm. Just follow the signs from the red light in Washingtonville. Hi everybody, Steve Jones from the Steve Jones Show. Today we'll talk with Tony DeFazio, Pittsburgh Sports Report, preview the Penn State football weekend and high school football, 3 to 5, News Radio 1070, WKOK. Welcome back to the KOK Live Telephone Talk Show. It is entitled On the Mark, named after me. <laughs> all right, so all right, just give, well, just, if I just say it over and over and over again in our history, eventually it will be true, and eventually everyone will misremember it as I do. <laughs> you rewriting history? I certainly am. One eight hundred seven nine five nine five six five. The open phones. We're talking about corporations. One of your emailers sends us a note uh, says, "I have to disagree with Chris from Milton. Corporations are legally required to make as much money as they legally can for their shareholders, with no concern for society." or doing good, says Caitlin, third smartest woman in the world. To that end, we turn the microphone over to John from Mifflinburg, and he certainly understands corporations and government. Thanks for checking in, sir. You're welcome. Good morning, guys. Yeah, I'm calling in uh, reference to your earlier guest, Nicole. Um, she had made the point that uh, government is bought by the highest bidder and made the point that's why corporations are bad, because they are the highest bidders. Uh the definition of a corporation is a group of people acting as a single entity. And that pretty much, if you look at that definition, that's what government is. It's a group of people acting as a sig single entity, but it's much more powerful than a corporation. And really, if you look at unions, you could list unions as a corporation because that's a group of people acting as a sig sig signal entity, too. Well, unions but, are incorporated? Yeah. Well, I mean, looking mm -hmm. at the definition, that that's that's about what a corporation is. It's a group of people acting as a signal or a single entity. So, but but I John, that, all, all, also though, unions are incorporated under for business purposes. So so yes, yeah, your your def protection. yeah your definition. But there's also yeah the the, the unions and, and groups are are entities among themselves. Let alone what you're making the analogy of right my point is um the government now we look at corporations as being bad because they can buy the government out but i think that we need to look at the government as you know maybe maybe the government's the bad person why are they selling themselves out to the highest bidder and i think that there's no way you're going to get away from that i think whether corporations have the right as people as they do now no matter if corporations exist or not, someone is going to be the highest bidder and be able to buy our government. And our government has, you know, power as a corporation, but it has government power also. So, one 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 person like um, someone on the left might look at it as, you know, you got to go after corporations so that this doesn't happen. Well, but people on the right look at it look as the government needs to not have all this power, so they can't so they can't be as effective of corruption as they are. So. I think that, um, like, most people's point of view on the right would be if you had smaller government, the government wouldn't be as powerful as it is. So we, we look at it as, like, government always is going to be able to be bought out. I don't think that you can keep that from happening. So if you can limit the powers of government, 
you could limit the destruction or the, the harm it can do to the people. Well, what, your point, though, being that the size of government, but the efficiencies of government, just like it's not the size of your business, it's not the size of your corporation, it's not the size of your of your group, it's the efficiency of that group with its mission and, and, and what their mission is. And, and for the people to say, you know, businesses only concern or corporations only concern is making a profit and not looking at society or the good, you know, that for the most part, those corporations, those businesses aren't going to be long for for a, a life or for a business life from a standpoint that society and those goods and services will be found elsewhere. And so, you know, the, the parts about, you know, what you're making is, you know, each, each group is its identity, whatever labels you want to put on it, but w- what's the efficiency towards society or, or what what can government do in its role, what can businesses do in its role, and what can, can labor do in its role? All right, 1-800-795-9565. I've got to take another quick, very last break of the day, and then we'll uh, launch into open phones, and uh, we'll wrap up with open phones, I should say, and we'll read the emails, uh, two emails pending that relate to this very topic. And so we'll take them up when we return. Uh, the toll-free line is open, 1-800-795-9565. That's 1-800-795-9565. I'm Mark Lawrence. Ben Reikley is here. Kevin Hur, the greatest engineer the world has ever known. The webcam is up and running. Sponsor Sponsors Lenape Solar and the Sunbury Motor Company. Attention Central Pennsylvania truck buyers. This is the event you've been waiting for. Sunbury Motors September new Ford truck sale. Pick from over 125 new Ford trucks with savings up to nine grand. That's right, $9,000. Choose from over 100 F-150s. The number one selling truck for 37 consecutive years. SMC has over 100 new F-150s starting as low as $22,859. Sunbury Motors has 25 of the hot selling Ford Escapes and they're slack. To historic lows starting at $19,890. FC is it done there? Take $8,500 off new expeditions and up to nine grand off new 2015 Super Duty trucks. Every new vehicle is clearly marked with the lowest prices of the year. And financing as low as 0% for up to 72 months is available on many models. Hurry into Sunbury Motors in the North 4th Street Auto Plaza during this unprecedented September new truck sale. Sunbury Motors proudly serving the Susquehanna Valley for almost a century. Hurry before someone gets your new truck. Looking for comfortable, cost-effective heat? Look no further than Kohl's Hardware and Eden Pure Heaters. The Eden Pure Gen 4 Infrared Heater produces clean, economical heat and has no exposed heating elements that can cause a fire, making it safe for use near children and pets. The Eden Pure Gen 4 Heater saves you money. Eden Pure Heaters provide heat only where and when it is needed. The Eden Pure's power and portability deliver ultimate comfort, making it warm and cozy from head to toe, anywhere in your home. The Eden Pure Gen 4 Heater comes with a three-year warranty and is manufactured in North Canton, Ohio. If you're looking for an efficient, cost-effective, and safe source of heat, visit the knowledgeable professionals at Kohl's Hardware for expert guidance every step of the way. Eat and pure and cold. Check out the sale prices in our new circular at Kohl'sHardware.com and sign up for the exclusive online offers year-round. We're right around the corner, right here in your hometown. Come on home to Kohl's, your home for Eden Pure Heaters. Eat and pure and cold. Kohl's Hardware. Come on home to Kohl's. Where do you find safe and effective products to clean up the toughest messes around your home? Hi, I'm Bruce Fabrizio, inventor of Simple Green brand products. And I invite you to try a Simple Green solution for your cleaning needs. Simple Green! I'm so sure you'll be happy with the ability and safety of my products that I guarantee your satisfaction or I'll refund your money. To learn more, visit us at simplegreen.com. Simple Green! Simple Green! Cloud may be just another overused buzzword, but the cloud is an effective computing environment that can save your business time and money. Barracuda Networks is no stranger to the cloud. In fact, all of our security and storage solutions connect to the cloud for continuous updates and off-site redundancy. Barracuda's cloud also plays host to our email security, web security, file sharing, and e-signing services. We even offer solutions on Amazon's AWS and Microsoft's Azure public cloud platforms. To try any of our cloud-connected solutions free, visit barracuda.com slash cloud. The Exergen Temporal Scanner Thermometer gives a fast, accurate temperature reading with just a gentle forehead scan and is used and recommended by more medical professionals everywhere. Here's what a real Exergen customer had to say. 
This is a wonderful product. When I was in the hospital having my baby, the nurses used one to take my temperature, so I decided to get one. It's a fantastic product. I recommend to everyone. Backed by over 50 published medical studies, more than any other thermometer, know you're getting the best. The Exergen Temporal Scanner Thermometer. Gastric Bypass, no surgery.com. Roca Labs invented a natural formula that replaces the need for expensive and dangerous surgery. This gastric bypass, no surgery formula creates an immediate effect without surgery. Roca Labs formula is better, safer, and cheaper than gastric bypass surgery. Roca Labs has over 100,000 success videos on YouTube. Go to gastricbypassnosurgery.com. Lee's Carpet resists spills and stains so well, Oberdorf's Carpet One Floor and Home is having a spillabration. Enjoy 50% off with 18 months special financing on select styles of Lee's Carpet. Plus, you can save up to 30% on select hardwood, laminate, and tile floors, too. Hurry in. The Lee's Spillabration Savings Event ends September 21st at Oberdorf's Carpet One, Route 15, one mile south of Lewisburg. Subject to credit approval. Minimum monthly payments required. See store for details. It's Friday, Friday, gotta get down on Friday, everybody's looking forward to the week. It is uh, football Friday. We've got four football games on the radio tonight, so we hope folks uh, take advantage of those. Let's see. We congratulate Norman Folk. He's the winner of the Penn State uh, ticket, so congratulations to him. He's headed to Happy Valley on us. He'll be headed up there uh, tomorrow after he comes up and picks him up today. <laughs> we'll have we'll need more qualifiers next week because uh, next week a... Another team comes to play. And Northwestern. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I was going to say, I can never remember Big which, Ten. which is Big which. Big Ten opener. Oh, thank heaven. Penn Actually, State. it's it, the Big Ten home opener. Home opener, yeah. But up there. And uh, Kevin, what, three three games on four stations for Sunbury Broadcasting? That's correct. Three games for four stations. Milton and Lewisburg will be heard on both 100.9 The Valley for the Lewisburg side, 1380 WMLP for the Milton side. Uh, I'll be in Mifflinburg for Shikolimi and Mifflinburg. And Pat O'Brien, Ryan Brandt will be on the road. Well, actually, not on the road. They're at home with Sealands Grove and Shemokin on one, uh, um, 107.3 FM. All right. Well, thank you very much for that. Uh, we've been talking about corporations. Are they people or not? Citizens United, of course, the big Supreme Court decision. Uh, one of our listeners, Cindy, sends us a note, uh, primarily uh, sent to Nicole Farraguna when she was on the line earlier, saying, Nicole, many nonprofits and charities are organized under a corporate model. I'll give you that uh, some of them have behaved very badly. Some are fraudulent. Some are about raising the income of the board and the officers and not about their mission. But should we make blanket statements that all of them are profit-oriented, nefarious organizations? Question mark. Cindy? Well, uh, again, you look at uh, you look at the businesses, you look at their goods and services, and and what they're supplying. And uh, it is hard to to separate businesses and then how businesses are formed. Legally, you can talk about it. For tax reasons, you can talk about it. But uh, going back to the, I think the one of the original statements was the money in politics and how you're going to get money out of politics. Time can only tell. All right. One of our listeners, third smartest woman in the world, takes uh, the Ben to task for interrupting Nicole when she was trying to answer his questions, uh, saying, I want to point out that Ben only talks down to and scolds women. I have not heard him speak this way to a man, but then she sent another note. Correction, he does talk that way to Than, but elderly men are feminized by macho men like Ben. And Ben says, not so. so. Oh, that led to great bumper music, too, and I could have played macho man. Macho, macho. Well, yeah, play it Monday play morning YMCA. when Ben comes back. Yeah. Play ben YMCA, be, too. Ben will be back up on Monday. You're listening to News Radio 1070 WKOK Sunbury, 10 a.m.